you all hear me, yeah? yeah. Right, in, in, our, uh, <laughs> in our discussion, we covered quite a lot of ground, so what we did is we took a list of points, and I'm just going to try and summarise those points. One of the first things that we stressed is that it's absolutely crucial that we back uh, the, 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 the manifesto that has gone out to show that we are part of a global movement, something that spreads all across the world, and something that's connected to all the struggles that we've seen that have been this past year, this past year, which is like our 1968. And I think that we should be identifying uh, absolutely with that. But also, we should have our own demands. But these demands shouldn't be long uh, and in detail uh, and, and overly worked out. We should have a short list of demands that we think will connect with the widest layers of people possible and will also raise the confidence of people who are angry that they can do something and that they can fight back. Because actually, the bigger demands, the kind of things people are talking about, about systemic alternatives, which I absolutely agree with, these are the kind of things that we want to bring people here to talk about. And these are the things that we can have real discussions around and generate new ideas, new thinking around them. Some of the things that people suggested, though, for example, is tax havens, tax avoidance. Why on earth are we having all these cuts when the richest people in this country avoid 120 billion in tax every year? Why isn't that money, why isn't that money being spent on public services? Why is it that factories are being closed down when people need jobs and we need to be building solar panels and wind turbines? There are very simple arguments that will make people feel confident to get up and fight. We've also had a suggestion that we need to separate the corporations from the state. We need to have arguments about why on earth are essential things like food traded on the stock market. These are the kind of arguments we can be having here. We should be putting across arguments about why is it that we're paying the price of the crisis. We're the victims of the crime, and yet we're the ones who are paying as the bankers who should be prosecuted. But also, how this has got to be a process of discussion and debate, how we can bring together different ideas, and what goes on here when we do that is crucial. But even more importantly, actually, is how do we reach out to wider layers of people? And we can talk about networks, so we text people, we talk to our friends, but actually we can do some real concrete things. Three million people travel through the tubes in central London every day. We want to be at the tube station, yeah. leafleting people. We want to be leafleting the colleges. We want to be getting shout out in their lectures in the universities. We want these things to be raised in trade union branches. We want to be getting this out to the widest layers of people as possible. And then the last two things. One is that everything that we put out, every piece of propaganda, every piece of information has to say, join us. We want you to come here and join us. But also, that we need to think about, that we need to get out of here as well, and we need to join other people. And so, for example, there's going to be a double-decker bus going around Camden tomorrow, putting the case against the cuts and for why we need to strike. We need to get people on that bus, giving out leaflets, hanging banners off it, so more and more people will see us. And also, we need to get, on the 30th of June, when we show that we don't just have the will to change things, that we have the power to change things as well, that we get out, we go to the picket lines, and we try and get striking workers down here, because then we can really show what happens. When this kind of movement on the street fuses with the movement in the workplaces, we can show that we're invincible. Yeah.